Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, the place to be if you want to be financially happy. This is Rose Fresh Fausto, also known as FQ Mom. FQ is the ability to make sound decisions and actions in managing your personal finances. It is the IQ and EQ of handling money. If you haven't seen it yet, click this episode to know more about this essential 21st century skill. For this episode, we will talk about the FQ test. All throughout our lives, we always have to take some sort of test. Exams, evaluations, assessments, or pagsubo in Filipino. Why? Because we need scorecards. Scorecards to measure how we are doing. There's the IQ test, the EQ test, personality test, grit test, physical checkup, at kung ano-ano pang mga tests. The importance of scorecards is that they provide us with feedback mechanism. It is our way of knowing where we are so we know what to work on in order to reach our goals. How about when it comes to handling money? Is it really just those financial literacy tests that assess our knowledge of inflation, interest, investments, and other finance matters? You may ask, what if finance is not my cup of tea? What if I hate math? Does that mean I'm doomed to be financially unintelligent for life? Today, I'm going to tell you, don't you worry, baby. We will talk about how to be financially intelligent, whether you are good or bad in math. We will talk about the right way of measuring your financial quotient. And I'm here to guide you as you take your FQ test. Are you ready? In my years of writing and talking about financial intelligence quotient, I have come to confirm firsthand that FQ is not all about knowing financial concepts. In fact, a bigger part of FQ is behavioral because it involves that emotionally charged commodity called money and that goes beyond the cerebral or our rational understanding. In my journey of observing, studying, collaborating with institutions, identifying solutions that work and don't work in order to help people get hold of their money matters, I developed the FQ test. The FQ test is divided into two parts, the knowledge section where there is only one correct answer per question and the behavior section which does not have a single correct answer because the correct answer is really your honest answer on how you actually behave in dealing with money. To have a high FQ, you need to have a high score in both parts, the knowledge and the behavior portion because it is your ability to make sound decisions and actions in managing your personal finances but don't worry about getting a low score for now your score is not cast in stone as i mentioned earlier scores just help us to know where we stand right now so that we know what to work on in order for us to reach our goals would you like to know where you stand if you do, just continue watching this video to take the FQ test and I will share snippets and lessons as we go along the way. If you'd like to take it on your own, you may visit fqmom.com and just click FQ test. Or you just click the link provided in the description in this video. But hey, let's do it now. No need to pause the video, just blurt out your answer. Let's start with the knowledge section. Number one talks about inflation, the general increase in prices of goods and services which diminishes the purchasing power of our money. This is a good reminder that it is not enough to save but we need to grow our money.
This is the concept of interest. If you are the owner of cash, you earn it. If you are the borrower, you pay it. Bond is a financial instrument. The issuer of the bond, in this case, Company A, is the borrower. If you buy Company A's bond, you will earn interest from Company A because Company A owes you money. Stock is a security that represents ownership of a fraction of a corporation. So if you buy stock of Company Z, you are now part owner and you will participate in both the income or the loss of the company. Its value goes up and down and your earnings from this investment is not guaranteed. Remember that. Were you surprised with the correct answer in this number? So please, huh, always pay the entire outstanding balance when paying your credit card and not that number in big bold font which is just the minimum balance. Funds are a great way to participate in different forms of investments. When you say pool, it means it is aggregating or putting things together. In this case, money from various investors are put together for the purpose of investing. This allows you to invest in various options even if you are only, you know, konti pa lang ang pera, if you can only afford, let's say, 1,000, 500, or sometimes even 50 pesos for some funds. And this is not something that you can do if you are just doing it on your own without the help of pooled funds. Unlike your cash in your usual savings account, pooled funds are not insured by a deposit insurer such as PDIC. Stocks, as discussed in number four, is the asset class that provides the highest return in the long run. There are various ways to participate in this asset class. Through direct stocks, through pooled equity funds such as mutual funds, unit investment trust funds or UITF, exchange traded funds or ETFs, and the like. So if you are 25 years old and investing for the long term, you are most likely to get the highest return from this asset class. This number talks about diversification, an investment strategy that mixes a variety of investments in one's portfolio. It is the strategy that observes the saying, do not put all your eggs in one basket. Life insurance is a pure life insurance that guarantees payment of a stated death benefit. It is the cheapest form of insurance that is clearly separate from investments. Sometimes buyers of combo insurance products complain about their policies because they are not fully aware of the insurance portion and the investment portion of what they purchase. 
So always be very clear on that. A breadwinner is responsible for the welfare of the family. In the hierarchy of needs that he has to cover, definitely travel comes last among the others mentioned in this number. Now let's compute your score in the knowledge portion. For every correct answer you get, give yourself 5 points and 0 for incorrect answers. How many correct answers did you get out of the 10 questions? Multiply that number by 5. That is your score in the knowledge section. Now let's go to the behavior section. Since there is no one right answer in this section, please take note of the letters of your answers in this section. Write it down if you answer A, B, C, D, E, or F, okay? Let's now compute your score in the behavior section. Please give yourself the corresponding points for the answers you made. All answers in letter A get 0, B, 1, C, 2, D, 3, E, 4, F, 5. Please add your points, then multiply the total by 2. That is your score in part 2 behavior. Now, let's add your knowledge score and behavior score. That now becomes your FQ score. So how did you find the FQ test? Was it easy or difficult? Happy ka ba? This is score mo. Which section did you do better in? Was it the knowledge portion or the behavior portion? Now I will tell you what your FQ score means to you. 0 to 50 is poor. If you scored 0 to 50 points, let's be honest, you need a lot of improvement. But don't despair. A good number of people go through life learning about so many things, even taking advanced studies in different fields, but they fail to do the same when it comes to handling money. So you're not alone, and you can definitely improve your situation. Learn the basics. Go back to part one to understand interest, inflation, debt, equity, etc. The more important part actually is to improve on your behavior. Make it easy for you to pay yourself first by setting aside money from each cash inflow and joining FQ and to ones with people you can learn from. If you are overwhelmed, take baby steps and improve on your behavior gradually. Do it now, otherwise poor your rating might be your financial condition in the future. 
After you come up with your tweaks in your financial behavior by applying what you have learned here, calendar your next FQ test. After six months, include the link that we're providing in the description that will bring you to fqmom.com FQ test. I promise if you do something about it now, you're bound to get a higher score six months from now. 51 to 60 points. If you got anywhere from 51 to 60 points, there are some things that you already know about money, but there are still a lot more to learn. Devote more time to learning about FQ. Make sure you understand each of the items you didn't answer correctly so that you are properly guided in making your financial decisions from now on. Then, turn to the behavior part and take actions to improve the items where you scored low. Commit to making the changes. Then, take the test six months from now and hopefully you will get a higher score. 61 to 70 points. This is satisfactory you are doing okay. Check the items you got wrong in the knowledge part and make sure you understand them well. Bring that knowledge with you as you make financial decisions from now on. On the behavior part, commit to improving some more so that you will have a happy and comfortable financial future. Then calendar your next FQ test six months from now. 71 to 80 points, that's good. Congratulations actually. You should be proud of yourself. You are on your way to financial happiness. Check out the questions in the knowledge part that you didn't answer correctly so you are properly guided in making your future financial decisions. Further improve your financial behavior to ensure a comfortable future. Have fun in making some tweaks in your spending and investing habits. Then calendar your next FQ test six months from now. 81 to 90 points. Very good! Congratulations! Woohoo! You should be very proud of yourself. You are on your way to financial happiness. Maybe you are there already. Continue with your FQ journey and if you still want to improve even further, just schedule your next FQ test six months from now. You know, what's important is that you teach and influence others to have a similar journey as yours. Make having a high FQ look like really cool. Okay, 91 to 100 points. Excellent! Woohoo! <laughs> Slow clap for you. Wow, you really have a super high FQ. You are on your way to financial happiness. Maybe you are there already. You know what you should do is that you give some tips to me on my next installment of the FQ trilogy. Kidding aside, your excellent knowledge and behavior should be shared with others. Start with the people within your circle of influence. I know sometimes it's difficult to do this, especially to your close friends and family as it may be misconstrued as being mayabang, big yabang mo naman. If that's the case, just be careful but don't be discouraged. You possess something that's rare and it's your responsibility to inspire and help others get into a better financial state. Start with the ones who are willing to learn from you. Then proceed from there. Once again, congratulations! Whatever FQ score you got, try to make the most of it. It gives you a preview of how financially happy you will be, especially in your retirement years. A higher score will help you become free from financial stress while a lower score may be taken as a warning of looming financial stress in the future. If not, improve. But remember, your FQ score, again, is not cast in stone. You can definitely improve it. And one way of doing so is to join me in our next episodes. The more you're exposed to discussions about being financially happy, the more likely you will be. If this video somehow gave you something valuable, I'd be very happy if you click the like button. I'd love to hear from you. Just write in the comment section below. What else do you want me to discuss that will benefit you? To add a little fun to your FQ journey, have an FQ buddy. Encourage your family and friends to take the test, especially those whose financial habits somehow affect your life. Always remember that we are all better off when everyone is better off. 
So the question is, who are you passing this video on to date the FQ challenge? This has been Rose Press Fausto wishing you all a high FQ.